All right, guys, we uh, have a fully functional system and we're ready for expansion. That's actually some dwarf cattail that I brought over from another one of my ponds. That got Plants got so big they start falling over, so I'm gonna make a couple more of those. And uh, That's all the way at the bottom. We'll probably lift them up on a center block so they're not completely to the bottom, a little bit more exposed. Uh, a little emergent vegetation. Uh, another project I'll be doing, I'm gonna have to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, whichever one I feel like, I guess, today. Uh, maybe tomorrow, we'll see. Because uh, I'm gonna need some center blocks and some sack creek to start building out these four by four uh, wicking beds. But I'm gonna get some more center block, and I'm basically gonna cut this tank in half with center blocks, just set them in there, um, and maybe do a solid brick top to it. And the reason I wanna do that, you can see right now we got a ebb and flow dumping back there. And normally I'm gonna have water running back there too. I shut it off just so it'd be quieter, the uh, tea, and I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get back there. But what happens is that water gets moving around. If you put any kind of floating vegetation on it, water hyacinth, duckweed, salvinia, whatever, it gets just gets tumbled back there and it never gets established and it just basically destroys it. So by creating, and I'll show you in a little one of my other tanks where I've done this, uh, by creating a little divide there, we'll be able to grow uh, floating vegetation in here, which will be do a lot, keep the water temperature down and things like that. So uh, that's one of the next things to happen. Come on back here, we'll take a look at some of the stuff we planted. Some of these plants, honestly, I was supposed to be far ahead of where I am this year and they're not very happy. They've been sitting in little six pack containers and whatnot for too long. Uh, this looks pretty good. This is sugar baby watermelon. And uh, that that's done just fine. Um, I don't remember what this is. This is a uh, some sort of a squash. It doesn't matter really what it is. Um, just wanted to get something in here to get started. A little bit of chives, there were in some plugs. These little sad looking peppers here, these are all detal. And uh, they just never took off in the little starting pots I put them in. They look pretty sad. We'll see if any of them take off here. If they do, you know, I can transplant them other places or what have you. That's what's nice about being in this, you know, this uh, expanded shell cap. It's just really easy to remove and replant plants. And these are a pepper called habanata, which they look like a habanero, but they're habanata, as in not a heat, right? No heat. Uh, they also, compared to the, even the other peppers that weren't happy, they just really never took off. We'll see if maybe we put a little steroid uh, action into them, sort of like here, uh, get them off to a good start. Some other pepper plants, and I don't remember what they are, Cuban elves and Double Delight Hybrid or something like that. Um, little tomato plant I'll probably just throw some clones in for some tomatoes here because they'll they'll get ahead of these but these are kind of a cool uh, black cherry uh, black black striped zebra cherry tomatoes so we'll see if they do again I was supposed to have this stuff planted so long ago and I didn't what I'm actually uh, these are uh, called Wario greens also known as New Zealand spinach and we'll get some of those grown in here and probably transport into some beds what I'm really excited about this is uh, Armenian cucumber, aka snake melon, and this is one of those ashotas or whatever the hell, however you pronounce it, um, that uh, grows like cucumber, fruits that sort of look like cucumber, but they're more like a pepper. I've got several of them going to several different places. We'll see how that does. This this system, though, as far as the ebb and flow in it, I mean, there's going to be so much wicking bed. There's going to be 10 of those four by four beds. I mean, after I'm done with that, I'm done. That's more food than I could ever eat. Uh, right here, this little tip sticking up. This is a uh, Comet Hop Rhizome. And I'm eventually gonna have a pergola over here. And if this system doesn't do nothing for me but grow hops, as far as the ebb and flow portion of it, we'll call it a win. And it'll do other things too, but I mean, that's that's really kind of what I'm hoping for out of this, is to be able to produce hops in Texas. I've got some good friends down in Austin uh, that they're doing that. I'm thinking maybe two different varieties. Uh, the Comet was given to me by uh, a guy in Tennessee. And if that one takes off, this year will be enough rhizome to replant that bed forever and give plenty of it away to my other fellow aquaponics enthusiasts. And I'm gonna try to come up with some Fugles uh, rhizomes for this side eventually, because uh, Fugles is kind of my favorite hops to, to home brew with. I wanted to show you one weird thing. And sometimes you just, you just can't really understand why something's doing what it is. So I showed you these cool bell siphons that, that my buddy David came up with. And uh, you know, I've got one here that's got its own break in it, plus it's got the tube break. And I've got one that's just only relying on the tube to break it. And it works 
absolutely flawlessly in this bed. And so does this one. They both work flawlessly in this bed. Um, they broke just fine over here, but they always had trouble starting. And I was having to run this water really heavy flow. And anybody that's run aquaponics knows that sooner or later your flow starts to slow down on you and you need to open and re, you know, clean your valves basically. So if it starts hanging when you're just a little bit off of your, your, your highest flow speed, that could be a real problem. So I took one of my old school and I thought surely this won't fix it. But I just took one of my old school simple, you know, bell siphons with holes in the bottom. And I put that in there and it starts and breaks flawlessly. I went ahead and put in the, st the stand-up pipe for the, you know, the new style siphon. So if I ever want to jack with it and get it working, I can. I tried all different sorts of things. You can see I got a little bit of long pipe. I had the one under here I had coming this way. I had a 45 bringing it up a little bit. I've seen some people build traps in them, and I, I've thought about trying. And I, you know what I was like when I put that in there and it worked? I got a lot of crap to do. That works, we're done with it, and uh, maybe we'll play with it later, but the reason I wanted to really point that out is sometimes things in aquaponics, when you're dealing with these plumbing situations and siphons and all, sometimes you just need to do something specifically to one because it's like a problem child, and when you find what works for it, just accept it, use that, don't, don't keep fighting it. It doesn't make any sense to spend, you know, the next two days of my life standing here staring at this thing ebbing and flowing and trying to get it to work the way I want it to work with the siphon that I want it to work with. It works fine with that siphon. I, already, I didn't even have to build it. I had one laying on the ground from an old system. I threw it in there. It works. I'm done screwing with it until, like, when everything else is done, I'll come back and try to figure out what's going on here. Until then, let it be. Anyway, time to start building out the wicking beds. And uh, for right now, this one's just become a collection bin. Uh, but this will be the first one. And the cool thing... They're not quite 4x4 four four on the inside dimension, but they're dead gone close. So it's like a standard size raised bed. In fact, we could even manage it like a square foot garden for Bel Bel Bartholomew. Uh, it's not my favorite method of managing, but I might do one or two of them that way just as an educational thing so people can see that aquaponics doesn't always have to look like aquaponics. But this is going to be a beautiful water feature. And... Uh, well, I can't wait to get that trellis up there and get some hops up on it. Anyway, we'll catch up with you with the next part soon. Uh, I won't probably come back until we at least get the foundation of the, the stands built for this guy and these pipes plumbed in. Oh, here's another weird thing. Last night when I finally filled this all the way up, this bulkhead right here started leaking. And uh, I got the biggest uh, channel locks I could, tightened it as tight as I could. And it still kept leaking. And I mean, it was a good drip. I threw a quart jar down there where you see that cut bottle. And uh, I came back in 15 minutes. It was this quart jar right here. And in 15 minutes, it was about a third full. I thought, oh, well, damn it. I put that thing down there so it would be a little less of a mess. And figured I'll fix it in the morning. Figured I'd have to just take it off and silicone the backside and put it back on. Because I did determine that it was coming uh, through the penetration itself, not coming and slipping through the pipe and coming out the bulkhead came out later that evening to dump that tank and noticed that it hadn't filled up any since the last time i dumped it it stopped leaking so now i'm sitting here going well do i pull it off or do i leave it alone my wife said leave it alone if it leaks later you can fix it she's like well she knows enough about this stuff now she goes if you had to take that out could the, the ebb and flow bed keep running or would the water get too shallow? I said, well, it could keep running. She said, then leave it alone. If you ever need to deal with it, you can deal with it then. I think she's right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just because it was broke before, if it fixed itself, leave it be. But uh, anyway, we'll catch up with you guys later. Thought you might get a kick out of that.